Um, well, the How to Draw app is, um, it's for free and it was designed to work with the book. And so um, it was what I showed earlier with scanning pages. But if you go to page, uh, I think it's 206, there's a little QR code, scan that, it'll take you to our links page. You can access on that links page, all of the videos um, via our website. So the app I find is just a fun, interactive, fascinating way that you could stream video from a printed object and you can actually see the sort of drawings come to life and then go back to the book. Um, because I like the printed drawings on the printed page, right? Um, they look so much more real. So you hold this book up next to my sketchbook. I think it's a much better um, tool at communicating what is the finished scale and size and quality of the drawing than when I look at the same drawing on an iPad or uh, any other tablet or phone, I never get the sense that it's even really a drawing, right? It's somehow removed from the fact that, that somebody had a pen to that piece of paper. And so I like, I like both because this has the video, right? And the video component for how to and procedural things is so much better than this, which you have to, I know how hard it is to write about something such an abstract concept and put it into 10 steps that fit within the page count. You really have to skip over a lot. And so the fact that I could feed in and fill holes, right, and expand on concepts with video in the form of an app, right, um, in addition to the printed pages, which are better representation of the finished drawing, I thought was a really nice blend. So this is that idea of, of abstraction used. And, you know, I get something like what I'm calling my first, um, it's kind of like a photo reel thumbnail sketch. And the reason I say it's a thumbnail sketch is because it's done so fast. It takes me 10 seconds to load in an image, right? This is actually a photograph of the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. It gave me that shoe concept. And this is strictly like a graphic study. You have to be an experienced, you know, shoe designer to take it any further than this. but. If I'm just looking for happy accidents and things to stimulate, you know, um, new ideas, I found that this can be a really great way to work. Even though you're starting from something super complex in most cases, um, and then you have to simplify. It's kind of the opposite of that idea we talked about earlier, which was going from a blank piece of paper and each step getting more complex. This starts photoreal with maybe reflectivity, you know, all of the what looks like faux materials. Um, textures, all of that sort of thing. So you actually have to go from this and then go backwards. That's the tricky part. But it's really, really fun. I mean, in this folder alone, there's a thousand shoes, you know? And with this pipeline, I can do these thousand shoes in, you know, a week. And if my success rate, let's say it's 10%, there's a hundred shoes that are cool that you've never seen in your life. Probably my favorite genre of, um, probably art and design would probably be sort of around the streamlining era, you know, when they just start to f like roughly figure out aerodynamics and then everything was aerodynamic, including a pencil sharpener, right, and a chair and, you know, everything got that sort of um, overly streamlined aesthetic um, brought into it. So it's kind of that transition into art deco, but I'm not crazy about maybe art deco products so much as I was about the that that early industrial movement into the streamlining era. But you know, I was of that era of the Star Wars era too, of growing up with those, those movies. Um, I never really had all the toys and things, but I had definitely, when I saw them, they had a, a definitely an impact. This, this, you know, these other worlds, these imaginary worlds that were so real. Um, you saw people there, you know, like the, the Hoth, the ice planet, and, you know, all these walking, you know, transports and flying speeder bikes. You totally bought into it, you know, and, and now so much so that our whole world audience, you can do a floating car, and thanks to George Lucas and Star Wars, everybody believes it, right? I mean, in a rendering, everybody like, oh yeah, well, it's just got an anti-gravity device. It's like, oh right, like you can just go down to the street, street corner and buy one of those like a loaf of bread, right? So it's so much of the like, you know, common populist belief that you've seen it in so many movies, flying cars, floating devices, anti-gravity, which is totally almost believe they're real. And so certain things, when you see them enough in movies, become part of the accepted technological base. I love that influence of what the movies can do 
for genres of objects, but they think they're great predictors of the future when it comes to products and it comes to transportation design, architecture. It's, it's the playland. It's where people get to experiment and dream. I think, you know, I think the true smart uh, mobility is actually in urban planning and design, of which none of the car companies and transportation people are helping with. So, and really, I don't know if the architects are actually interested. Right, but I think um, rethinking the way people get around in urban centers and then designing them from the beginning to take into account those sorts of desires of mobility is what's important. But I don't think it comes from the car companies retrofitting to existing grids. It's more like, ideally, it's the grid itself um, that changes and is modified. Um, and then that, I, in a perfect world would then feed into all these new mobility devices um, as opposed to forcing it into what already is there. But I got to say it's getting to the point where you know the infrastructure is so bad in Los Angeles. I mean it's like to build a light rail that gets you a mile within the destination of where you really want to go. Like oh we're gonna build light rail and it's gonna get you uh, a mile away from LAX. It's like really? I mean that's is may as well just be zero. LA is getting to the point where you don't even want to own a car anymore because you buy a beautiful car that drives, so you go buy a BMW. What are you going to do? You sit in traffic, right? And so is that really the car, the ultimate driving machine? It's really like, well, no, I need the ultimate semi-moving machine. That's really what I need, right? I need the, the ultimate 12.2 mile an hour machine. And if that's in your brief and that's really what you're designing for, if the thing takes on a whole different character, right? Then it's like, mobile office, auto driving, automated driver, you know, it's just different. And so, oh, let alone you don't even want to drive. I mean, it's just not fun driving in LA. You dread it. You just don't want to. And so it's not, it's not really enjoyable anymore. And I, I love driving. So um, it's really rough for me to come to that conclusion. And, but I'd rather, you know, I have, a, I have a Ford Flex and I have a Boxster. The Boxster is obviously the fun one to drive. But I almost never want to drive it in LA because I stick shift and we're stuck in traffic, right? It's just no fun, right? You put down the top, what, to breathe exhaust fumes and smog. So it's like, great. Really fun car to drive in an environment I can't drive. Yeah, it's, it's a problem um, with no easy solutions, except maybe just get rid of it all um, on the car side. I mean, there are cities that are shutting down city centers, and those are the most pleasant cities to visit, you know? Um, that do have a, a better infrastructure to get around mass transit um, and walking. I mean, it's really, it's walking and bicycles. I mean, it, I gotta say it really works. Walking and bicycles in a city center are pretty awesome. When it comes to like my dreaming about hot rods, um, I have, I, let's say I'll qualify with like three, three categories because I can never just pick just one. So of course like a 32 Ford, maybe five window. Um, would be really, I, li I like the five window a little more. Um, but then I like the back end of the 34 and the front of the 32, and so it's probably end up being some sort of Frankenstein hot rod. That's a, you know, composite of multiple eras. But I like, I like that tall, um, you know, just lightly chopped enough, and, and I'm now really loving them like all matte black, some have sinister, right? Just attitude, like tons of attitude. Uh, big round yellow headlights on it. That, that's a, a fun um, aesthetic. And then, but I could also love uh, trucks because I also have this in the back of my mind, this, you know, probably also a Ford, 32 Ford truck maybe that's been modified with like Jaguar rear suspension and all exposed. So like maybe plexiglass bed and you can see all that suspension, you know, with the inboard brake discs, that whole like 70s Jaguar rear suspension, which is beautiful. And so it would again be a Frankenstein thing. But things that would show mechanicals. Um, and then if I really had my dream, of course I'd just build my own. So the, uh, the ultimate dream hot rod is to do a, and it's in this book actually, there's a the start of a project. Um, and it's one of our pop-up models. It's actually a, a model of a hot rod that I did. And um, it would be, because that Neville Page and I have a book idea we're working on which is called Hot Rods of Another World. And it's recognizable with a hot rod silhouette but it's all different technology. So alternate pure, uh, fuel source, right? So maybe it's a plasma battery electric drive 
thing, so I'd like it to be alternative power. And then I'd like it to experiment with maybe like the Michelin in-wheel suspension and steering and drive. So now the, the chassis is fixed. There's no suspension to the chassis. That frees up a whole new way of thinking. And then maybe the entire chassis is grown. So think like large scale uh, laser centered titanium or something. So what you can do with growing something that was a fixed chassis with no suspension, that could be super fun with those awesome you know, all-in-one all, all -in -one Michelin wheels and an alternate power source, but in the silhouette of a hot rod. That's kind of like my super fun vision. That's like my little personal hot rod project that's always spinning around in the back of my head.